Hi guys and welcome to Micro Homesteaders. I'm Merle and I know I don't belong in the kitchen but uh, Carol says I'm the jerky guy and I guess I am. I've always made the jerky so we will uh, prepare this recipe that's been handed down through the years and but you know as near as I can tell it's pretty much the same thing everybody else uses give or take. So. Uh, here we are. So what we have from left to right, one teaspoon of salt, one quarter teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, well it's hard to pronounce, one teaspoon of onion powder or dry onion, two tablespoons of liquid smoke, and you can you know, can work with that however you like it and one tablespoon of honey that is give or take and I like a lot of honey so there's probably a little more than a tablespoon there so what we're going to do now is we're going to mix it all in a bowl if I don't spill it all that is and uh, I tell you it's been a while since we made since we made jerky and it's just been too long. Ordinarily we make it out of venison. This time we thought we would give a, one of those London broils a, a try. I haven't used one of those. There's several different cuts that work well. Some that don't work so well. But uh, it's okay. Whatever you want. Let me see try this, uh, I think she calls this a whisk. We'll give this a shot, see if that honey's a little cold and it doesn't want to work real well. Mmm, boy that smells good. I could almost find some crackers or something to put in that and eat it just like it is. That there's good stuff. That liquid smoke really gives it the the pizzazz. All right, that's all mixed up. We're going to let that sit there for a little bit, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and work on this piece of meat here. Got a, just a little bit of fat here and there. And what we did, to, like most people do, we stuck this in the refrigerator. <laughs> I said like most people do, but. Do I have a good picture of this piece of meat? Well, I said like most people do, but we did something most people probably don't do. We actually put it in the freezer to make it easier to cut and promptly forgot to take it back out. So, we had to use that microwave I really don't like it in microwave, to be quite honest. I don't trust them. But, you know, my wife says I'm paranoid about too many things. I don't know. Maybe I am. But this is just about right now. Let me see if I can get through there. We'll set that to the side. And we'll come right around here. No, we want to cut on this side. And which one we try to do is cut these about, oh, I don't know, somewhere near 3 16 or something like that. I don't like it real thick, nor do I like it real thin. And, uh, well, I tell you, that's just right to cut. There's about what we're ending up with, and I can tell already that I like the London broil because there's nearly no fat, and it's really, really easy to cut. So we'll get 
through this. And it looks like the pieces are coming out about right for me. I need a little more practice. Wife said I'm using the wrong knife to be cutting meat with, but I don't know, I kind of like this one. I did hit it with the stone a little bit before we started. Kind of makes it easier too. But we haven't had uh, jerky for, gosh, it's been the longest time. None this year. And ordinarily, we will make jerky uh, Oh, during the holidays, I'm going to lay this right in this bowl with this uh, marinade. The longer the better, as far as I'm concerned. And we'll come back around and do this one. Those are a little thin. I can thicken those up a little. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to mix this up really, really, really super good. And then we're going to put it in all, everything, in a uh, plastic bag. And I don't know if I mentioned this already or not, but... I was talking to some of my relation about making jerky for a video and they asked me what my process was and I, and I told them what we normally do is we take the we take the uh, marinade, the, the beef in the bag and put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. And I've been told by several people that that 24-hour period is not all that necessary. So this time, we are going to try it for six to eight hours, depending on how hungry we get for jerky, I think, to be quite honest. So that's mixed up pretty good, and we'll put it in this bag. It wouldn't hurt to wipe my hands off this time and do it there for a second. Well, it meat's cold. Woo! So we're going to fill this bag up. And uh, we're going to try to make sure that we get every little bit right down to the last drop of this marinade in there. don't want to waste a bit of that. It's too good. Set that out of the way. Okay, let's try to get all the air out of it if possibly can. And seal that sucker up. Now what I generally do, aside from making a big mess, I mix it all up again within the bag. Got just a little bit of air in there and we'll let out. That should be good. I think the more you mix it up, the better it is. And what I will do is after, uh, oh, I don't know, two, three hours, 
somewhere along in there. I'll take it out and I will uh, do this again just to make sure that everything gets a little something. So in about six hours, I think, we're going to come back and we're going to go ahead and uh, prepare it for the microwave. Not the microwave. The dehydrator. And, uh, man, I can't hardly wait to tell you the truth. This is going to be good. So we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, and we're back, and as if by magic, eight hours has passed. So, let's get to it. <sighs> so, what we've got is the meat has marinated for eight hours, and it, it looks as if it has. So, we'll set that over here, and we'll get this up here where we can get to it a little better. And we'll take these pieces out and we'll lay them on the paper towel because we don't really want all that liquid inside our dehydrator because it makes a mess and I can tell you that that it does from experience. Sometimes you just have to do something once or twice to learn that it's not the right way to go. But in our case, this is not such a bad job, and I, I really do like that London broil meat because it comes out about the right, just about the right uh, width. I kind of like them about an inch wide like that. Let's get us another paper towel, and we will lay that one right on top and give it a gentle pat. And repeat. Boy, it smells so good. And what we'll end up doing is, as soon as we get it on our trays, we will uh, put it in the uh, dehydrator for, uh, I think it said four to six hours. And generally, pieces this thick and uh, considering the outside temperature is about 10 degrees, we'll uh, probably have to go the whole six hours. By the way, if I didn't mention, I should, the recipe that we will leave in the description will be for one pound. So uh, adjust accordingly for how much, for how much meat you have. I can tell right now though we should have bought more meat because this is this is about a pound and a half and I can tell you right now it's just not going to last long. <laughs> this jerky will go like it has wings, let me tell you. So, I was always afraid that if I didn't really leave a lot of liquid on the meat it wouldn't be as good, but I have found that is not the case. It really is okay to blot it so you don't have a mess in your dehydrator. Just enough so that it won't cause you any grief inside the dehydrator. Clean up a little bit of our mess here. And we're using the Excalibur. I don't know exactly how it was that we ended up with the Excalibur, but it's been pretty good for us. Uh, I don't know, considering, I've heard some people talk about the use of electricity, but considering that we have a, an electric oven, I can't imagine that it uses any more electricity than the oven would if you tried to dehydrate it in there, but I don't know. Whatever you got, whatever you like, I think that's the way to go. Make yourself happy. That's the important thing. 
So, yeah, like I said, we're just not going to have nearly as much. I have, uh, with venison, filled this entire nine space rack and had some left over to, to do again. But uh, looks like we're going to get a couple. And we're going to have to really uh, appreciate what we've got here this time. I don't know, we might just keep it a secret. Ordinarily, we uh, tell the family and and we call them to come over and pick some up and this, that, and the other, but uh, I'm just not real sure that we're going to be able to do that. So there's that one. And we'll keep going. This is really not too bad a job, to be perfectly honest, if you... Uh, it's just kind of, I think the biggest deal is just setting everything up more than once, when making the video at least. But I am hungry for jerky. And we have two. That's not a lot of jerky, but Hey, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. So now all we got to do is put it in the dehydrator. And you're all good. So I'm going to go over to the uh, dehydrator and put these trays in. And uh, Carol's going to try to follow me over there with the camera. Most of the heat comes out through the center, so since I don't have a full rack, I'm going to put the meat closest to the uh, to the heat. I set it for six hours, but I'll come back in about four and give it a look, see, see how everything's going. So we will see you in a bit. Well guys, that eight hours finally did pass, but it seemed like it took forever because this smelled so good I just wanted to come in here and grab some of it out of there. Anyways, I wish I could share it with you because it really is good. And I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this long video. They're a little longer than most of them we try to do, but uh, if you lasted this long, hopefully you'll make some of this good jerky and you'll love it. See you on the next video. Come back. What do you think, baby girl? Did you like it?